हे गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट ईसीएस टास्क डेफिनेशन सो बेसिकली व्हाट इज ईसीएस ईसीएस इज एन इलास्टिक कंटेनर सर्विस इट इज अ हाई परफॉर्मेंस कंटेनर मैनेजमेंट सर्विस दैट मेक्स इट इजी फॉर अस टू रन डॉकर कंटेनर ऑन एडब्ल्यूएस इट हैज बेसिकली गॉट थ्री डिफरेंट कंपोनेंट्स दैट इज क्लस्टर सर्विसेज एज वेल एज टास्क okay so if you don't have any idea about what ecs is you can go and watch my previous videos wherein i have explained the concept of ecs in greater detail right so basically tasks are nothing but a logical grouping of running containers right so in order to mention or give the information about how to run the tasks for and eventually the containers we make use of task definition so basically task definition is a metadata in json form that describes how to run a container right it requires information like image name with which our containers should run within the task the port binding for container as well as host this is also very important concept wherein i'll be covering this in the next slide in greater detail so you'll understand everything from scratch right then it also requires memory as well as cpu details followed by the environment variables as well as networking details so let's go and try to understand what are port binding how do we actually define them and how is it important for us to work on right so now if you consider an ec2 instance which forms the basic unit of your cluster then on top of it we'll be considering the ecs agent which is used for managing the containers or tasks which are running on your ec2 instance with the help of ecs right so on top of the tasks we have got different containers over here i'll take an example of an httpd container that is open for the port 18 right so whenever there is an external a request or external internet traffic coming on to this particular host that is an ec2 instance on port 8080 the docker will then map the external service to this particular container with port being 80 right so in this way the port binding is very much required in case of your containers right so this is what i wanted to explain you before we actually implement the task definition on our aws management console so we'll go there and create our task definition so in this case you can see that this is your ecs dashboard and this is a task definition so in order to create a new task definition we'll click on this then in order to select the launch type i'll be selecting this particular ec2 launch type and next now i will be configuring task as well as container definitions so first of all for the task definition name i'll be mentioning it to be my task definition right and for the requires compatibilities we have got an ec2 instance then for the task role we consider the task role to use or to make api requests to authorized aws services right so since i am not going to work with that sort of apis as of now i won't be selecting the task role i'll keep it as it is since it's optional next thing is about network mode wherein we have got 
different options like bridge, host, AWS, VPC, as well as none. So in this case, if we consider default for a Linux one, it will automatically consider bridge. Yeah. And for Windows, it supports default as well as AWS, VPC network modes. Okay. So for now, I'll be keeping it as default. In case of task execution IAM role, this role is required by task to pull container images and publish the container logs to the Amazon CloudWatch on your behalf. So basically this is what is done in case of task execution IAM role. For the task size, we can mention the task size or we cannot. It depends upon the requirement, right? And most importantly, if you are working with EC2 or external launch type, you, it is basically optional, okay? For Fargate, it is required, right? So the container level memory settings are optional if we mention the task size right here. So if over here I mention any of those sizes, then I won't have to use it again on container definition, right? So task size is not supported in case of Windows containers. These things you must keep in your mind, right? So the next thing for the container definitions, I'll add a container. Since we are working with HTTPD, I'll just mention it to be HTTPD and image will also be HTTPD as the latest. So we need to uh, understand the format for this particular image. Since I'm working with Docker Hub, which is a public repository, I don't have to mention any of the repository URLs right here, right? So I have directly made use of this. Then we have got a memory limit, which can be a hard limit or a soft limit. So basically, hard limit means that the task will be killed if it exceeds this particular limit. And soft limit is nothing but certain amount of memory is reserved but your container can request up to the hard limit. So this can be changed, whereas hard limit cannot be changed. And hence we give it more, mostly uh, we give it a fixed amount of memory right here. Then we have got port mappings. Now this section is very much important as in in our example, we considered host port to be 8080, right? Whereas our container port to be 80. So this was the port of our EC2 instance, right? So many, most of the times it may happen that this port on EC2 instance may be busy somewhere else right so in that case what we need to do is we can directly go and enter zero over here which will dynamically allocate port for our host as well as map it to this particular container port that is 80 of our httpd right so this is very important concept known as dynamic uh, dynamic port mapping right so now we are done over here. The rest of the things I'll be keeping them as it is. Also this essential is also a very important concept, which means that the container should be running in order to make or keep our tasks running. Okay. So rest of the things I'll be keeping them as it is and I'll go to add. Okay. Over here also, we can see that there is a elastic inference. Okay, it's showing me some sort of error right here. The hard limit, mem memory limit is invalid. Why? Because we have already mentioned 300 over here. 
and it should not exceed this particular um, so I'll have to change this to be 500 and now it won't give me any kind of error right you can also add volumes over here you can even configure by json if you have got a json file you can directly go over here and upload it directly yeah so this is how it can be used for our task definition creation now that we are done with the task definition it's showing me the version 3 why because i had deleted or deregistered the previous two versions for the task definition so it's showing 3 right here okay so we can now go to our json and we can review everything that has been mentioned right here so you can also see the port mappings as well as the memory limit and you can see the memory as well as the family the name everything is mentioned right here okay so in this way we can configure task definition on our aws management console so hope you found this video helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel if you found the videos helpful also don't forget to press that bell icon for the latest updates thank you so much and have a nice day